Thank you for coming. It's good to see so much interest, uh, so many people here to sort of get our message and the names, you know, out to the general public. Um, I think the media will play a big role over the coming years in terms of our connection with our supporters so that there's a good understanding in what we're trying to do and, and the journey that we're going to go on together um, because you will play your role in it as well. So. Um, look, I think the easiest way to do this is for me to name the squad um, and then we can sort of have a bit of a Q&A on it. Um, we've tried to get quite a lot of balance in the squad in terms of positions, in terms of experience, in terms of youth, but also, and we'll go into it a little bit later on, there's also quite a number of injuries that mean we've had to sort of pivot in one or two positions and we see quite a few new names in the group. Okay, so um, without further ado, um, we've named a squad of 24 players um, for these upcoming two qualifiers in Morocco and in Gabon. The goalkeepers are Ibrima Jarju, uh, Sheikh Sibi, Modu Lamansar. The defenders, uh, Saini Sanyang, Omar Gay, Mohamed Sana, Dadi Dudu Gay, Omar Kali, Idrissa Sisse, and Dembo Saidi Khan. The central midfielders, Ebu Adams, Yusuf Abob, Alassane Mane, and Mamadou Bajo. In the attacking line, we've got Musa Baro, Musa Jawara, Alu Federa, Yankuba Minte, Ablai Jallo, Ibrima Kale, Abdullah Sanyang. And then the strikers are Mohamed Badamosi, Adama Bojang, and Adama Sidibe. So that's the 24-man list that will be traveling with us to Morocco for the first game against the Seychelles and then onwards to the second game against Gabon. Just to add to what the moderator had said in terms of our coaching staff, obviously a lot of these faces and names around me you'll know very well. Um, we will also be welcoming three international staff into the group. Um, those are our assistant coach responsible for performance, sports science, uh, Mikhail Agendia. Uh, we will be up inviting an assistant coach in charge of analysis, Mr. Milad Samadi, an Irish national, and also then a physiotherapist, who is Mr. Brandon Culhane, another Irish national. So the three of them will be joining us in Morocco and they'll be working together with our domestic staff here to make sure the players are well facilitated and well looked after and to make sure we get those high performance levels. Gone are the days where we could prepare teams for three or four weeks before an international fixture. And that's because of the global nature of the game. It used to be years ago, and I'm sure you all remember even here within Gambian football, where maybe the majority of the team were a home-based team. And so the idea of a FIFA window didn't necessarily matter as much because if your players are all home-based, then you can agree with the federation to suspend the league for an extra week or two and you get more preparation time. But the nature of the global game that we live in now is that players are coming from all over the world. You know, you look at the number of countries our players are playing in, we only have those five days. And that's the same for all. It's the same for the English national team, for the Brazilian national team, for the Japanese national team. So a short time is the nature of the work we're in now. My job in terms of assessing these players didn't just start today, you know, even in my sort of considerations to come here and work with the Gambian Football Federation, I was looking at the players, both the players who'd been at the recent AFCONs, the players who had maybe just missed out, the players who were involved in the U20 selections over the last year. So already I had an idea of what the players are capable of, players that fit into my style of play, because every coach has his own style of play. So already I had a group of players in my mind. And look, I'll be honest with you, before I had even agreed the final version of the contract, I already on note paper in my office at home had started sketching out what my first squad might look like. 
Now that has changed a little bit because with injuries, with player availability, like I said, you have to pivot. And we have, I think, the list of injuries is sort of 11, 12 players long who might have been included in the squad. So we had to pivot with that. But I'm confident that the group we've got together will be able to go out and play in a fashion that represents me and the Gambia well. But like I said in my introductory press conference, I think the way the team will play this coming week is not the same as it will play in a year's time. There's an evolution we have to go through as a team, but yeah, I think I know the players. I've obviously relied on the knowledge of the staff who've been here and who are joining us, but yeah, I'm confident that the guys we have are ready, they're fit, they're playing regularly, which is the important thing. If you look down at the number of appearances that almost all of this squad have, They've all, been, they've all played 25, 30, 35 times this season. So nobody's been sat on the bench and they're ready to go and having spoken to them, they're ready to compete and they're ready to win. Here in the Gambia, we're incredibly blessed in that, you know, I've been with national teams before where players, you have to maybe bring players who aren't playing as many minutes as you'd like. But you look at the squad that we've named here and there's going to be guys on the substitutes bench in the matches who are playing 30 games for their clubs. And in a lot of national teams, especially for countries the size of the Gambia, if you're playing 30 games for your club side at a top level, you would expect to start for your national team. But we are very blessed and very fortunate that we're going to have a subs bench that has players who are playing lots of minutes for top level clubs. So that makes the process of selecting a national squad challenging. The other thing that maybe gets misunderstood is the national team is not the best 23 players. It's the 23 players who can play the best together. And sometimes we have, look, the nature of Gambian football is that there's a lot of attacking talent out there. There's good, there's good defensive talent as well, but the depth in the defensive positions is maybe a bit less than the depth in the offensive positions. I assume Brazil and Argentina have a similar challenge. Yeah. So in that sense, we've left out some really good players who will be disappointed not to be in the 24-man squad but who shouldn't get disheartened because they will get their opportunity. They just need to keep pushing, we're tracking them, we're looking forward to bringing them in. But yeah, it's about bringing together the players who we think will gel well together, who will perform at a high level together. And that mixture of youth and experience is good because look, the experienced players are serious. They've had the success in their career because they're serious. But it's also nice to light a little fire underneath them. And you do that in football terms by maybe putting a young, hungry player behind them so that the senior player knows, ah, if I don't perform to my maximum, there's this kid who's ready to take my shirt. But equally, that young player, he has to take the shirt off the guy who's got 40 caps, 50 caps. So I said this a lot in the last few days, the best coach in the game is competition and we want to create competition for places in the national team and if we do that we're going to reach some really special places over the next two years. Um, so yeah, Ablai, we'll deal with Ablai first. So Ablai picked up a little knock a couple of weeks ago. Um, he missed out the game against PSG, the final game of the season. He was playing right up until that but didn't play the final game against PSG and yeah, didn't play yesterday for Mets against San Etienne. Um, he is in training um, so he is, but he isn't 100% yet. There is the hope that he'll play in the second leg in the home game against San Etienne on Sunday. Um, you'll notice we have a 24-man squad and not a 23-man squad, which is common. Um, that is specifically for that reason. Um, because we are not 100% on Ablai. We believe, having spoken to the guys over at Mets and the player himself, that Mets's hope is that he will take part in their game on Sunday. And if he does that, then we're all ready for him to fly out straight afterwards and join us the following day. Um, that is in our planning, but we've also had contingency plans in the sense that we've named a 24-man squad and not a 23-man squad because we understand there's a question mark. His injury is not serious, um, but it's just one of those ones that keeps you out for one or two weeks. It's not like some of the other guys who they're out for six weeks. 
And if you're out for six or seven weeks, your fitness levels drop off significantly. Whereas missing one week of training, 10 days of training, whilst you're doing rehab with the physios and the, the rehab team, you're not losing your sharpness, you're not losing your fitness levels. So that's where we are with Abelai. Um, Jibril is doing really well in Tanzania. He's in the cup final uh, this weekend against Yanga. You know, we wish him all the best. And yeah, he's on our radar. Um, I spoke in my, and why is he not involved? Um, levels is the answer. Um, so, you know, I would suggest, you know, the other players in that position, like let's look at the other players. Um, you've got Musa Baro, you've got Musa Jawara, who's had a great end of the season. You've got Alu Federa, who's had a great season. Jan Kuba Minte, who's been one of the players of the year in the Netherlands. Ablai, who we've obviously just mentioned. And then Abreu McCauley, who's just won the championship in Switzerland. So my question would be, yes, we understand that uh, Gibral Silla is doing really well, but in order to include Gibral, we've got to leave out one of the guys I've just named on the list. And so the question is, do you leave out Yankuba? Do you leave out Musa? Either of the Musas? You know, so it's, we understand, and this is the challenge of putting a national team. And maybe another coach makes a different decision. Maybe another coach says, hey, that list of five or six players, we're going to leave one of them out, and we're going to take Jibril. Yeah? But for me, and you've got to remember, I've just come from East Africa, okay? Um, and the Tanzanian League, if I were to rank all of the leagues in Africa, one through 50, 52, uh, the Tanzanian league would probably be in the mid-twenties. The top teams, Simba and Yanga, are spending a huge amount of money, and they're doing well in the Champions League, and Azam have a good budget as well, and actually have done really well to finish second in the league ahead of Simba. But that's a big result for them. But in general, the Tanzanian league would be in the mid-twenties in Africa. And so he's doing well, we're tracking him, but when I compare them to the other players and the amount of minutes they're getting at top tier leagues, the Swiss top division, the French top division, the Belgian top division, the Dutch top division, some of them playing in the Europa League, etc., my decision was not this time. But that doesn't mean come September I won't make a different decision.